I recently got a book and I thought I'd share it with you. It's a cookbook, kinda, and a survival guide, kinda. And what is it? It's The Walking Dead. It's the official cookbook and survival guide. And this is by Lauren Wilson. Now, Lauren Wilson is the same person that wrote The Art of Eating Through the Zombie Apocalypse. And maybe I should review this book sometime too, because you can see I got little, little yellow tabs of things for me to remember where they're located. But she obviously likes zombies and she is a cook. So she's combined the two. Now, when The Walking Dead first started out, my uh, youngest son and I would watch it every Sunday night. We couldn't wait for another episode. We just really, really enjoyed it. And as the seasons progressed, we started to lose interest a bit. You know, maybe characters we liked were killed off. And I made it to the end of the seventh season, but my son stopped when they, uh, Negan murdered Glenn with that very violent scene with the, the bats and the eyes popping out. And Anyway, he said, that's enough. I'm not gonna watch this anymore. And I just lost interest. But for six seasons, we had an enjoyable time. And you know, it's one of those fun what ifs. You know, I'm not really worried about zombies knocking on my door, right? But it's about surviving and how do you take care of your family members? And how do you gradually form a community again when there is a terrible SHTF event? So it was great for preppers to watch too. And we really, really enjoyed it. So when I saw this book and it was used, so I thought, oh, I'm gonna pick it up, see. And I was a little, at first I said, well, let me show you. So see how it looks like it's worn here, here and here. That's just part of the design. I didn't realize that. And if you open up, like, you'll see like coffee stains on it in various places. Like, look at that one. So it isn't because of where you got your used book. It's just, that's part of how they made this. So this cookbook details the skills and recipes you need to survive while avoiding being eaten during a walker apocalypse. But the book is divided into two sections, survival skills and recipes. Let me show you. So here's the contents. Chapter one is food survival basics. Chapter two, fueling up for survival. Chapter three, dig in meals for hungry survivors. Chapter four, sweet treats to die for. Chapter five, end of the world beverages and libations. And chapter six, putting up food preservation for end times. Now, of course, there's a page on bug out bags and it shows Daryl here with you know, his arrows too. And it has the things like you expect, medical kit, water treatment, survival fishing, etc. But I thought it was interesting that it also included fruit and vegetable seeds because obviously we're talking about a long, long SHTF situation. Survival caches, water, very, very important, how you can treat it. So for the water page, I really found it lacking because it didn't say that you could use bleach to treat your water. But maybe that's because after six months, bleach isn't nearly as effective. And this is thinking about a long-term scenario. And then we have fire. Let me show you that up closer. Power hack, shelf-stable foods, scavenging and barding, quick and dirty growing guide, hunting basics, common fish and wild game, Fishing basics, food preservation, it does go into water bath canning and dehydrating, preserving meat, cooking and baking with fire, and that's it. And then we're into the recipe section. And 
it sometimes gives little suggestions on each page. Don't know if you remember the episode where Daryl, in order to survive, had to eat a squirrel raw. Well, it has a warning about that. Why squirrel tartar isn't a good idea. Remember when Daryl was impaled with one of his own arrows and then started to hallucinate a pep talk from Merle? Well, he also had a creekside dinner of squirrel tartar. And in that dire survival situation, it probably saved his life. But squirrels are known to carry the disease tularemia. So always cook them thoroughly. Good advice. And then they have one for rattlesnake too. When to eat rattlesnake? The answer is when you haven't eaten for days and Daryl roasts it whole then tosses a segment of it your way. Actually, if you do ever catch a rattlesnake for dinner, be sure to remove its head with extreme caution as you can still be bitten and injected with the venom even after the snake is dead. Get the head off and discard it without physically handling it in any way. And before you roast it whole, a la Daryl Dixon, be sure to skin and remove the guts first. The skin can be peeled off like a very tight stocking. Yep, I'm not sure if Daryl knew the proper way to cook rattlesnake. And then there is a comment here about the amount of calories you'd need. Counting calories during the apocalypse. Did you know that if Michonne was swinging her katana for an hour, she would burn approximately 400 to 600 calories? Though you may have counted your own calories before to avoid consuming too many, in the event of a walker apocalypse, you need to start counting them to make sure you're getting enough. Calories would be hard to come by, so most dietary, dietary restrictions and personal preferences would have to be thrown out the window. On top of that, the days of being sedentary would be over. The average active survivor in The Walking Dead, whether running around evading walkers, shoring up defenses on the wall, or farming vegetables, would likely need about 3,000 calories per day, a full thousand more than the average person does now. But remember, the opposite might be true. Think of being quarantined. Hmm? You didn't need 3,000 calories unless you wanted to gain that quarantine belly. So I bought the book for the recipes, right? But most of these recipes aren't using your survival pantry food. They have a little different twist to them, a little different name, but they're just a good recipe. Now, we all remember probably Carl when he found that pudding, but this recipe says how to make the pudding and it's making it from scratch so that's a great recipe to have but you do need to have butter and eggs in order to make it although it did say if you didn't have the two eggs you could add extra cornstarch instead and still have carl's pudding and what are some of the others okay because of the garden they had the prison right we have a good roasted Garden medley. Let's see. Yeah. A squirrel recipe. And it does have things like on the opposite of the squirrel recipe, it says how to make your own Cajun seasoning from scratch. Here's wild boar chops with juniper apples and sage so sounds really good but pretty gourmet for survival right there's tara's turkey chili curried goat stew chicken a la lucille and i think that is okay let me show you a picture okay the chicken they flatten and I guess they're she's saying you could use Lucille Negan's bat to flatten the chicken I don't think so there's been a lot of other germs on that bat um, and there's even different green recipes ooh can you hear that thunder there's cherry moonshine and 
something called the walker, which is made with honey mead, apocalypse sweet sun tea, uh, homemade peach schnapps. So, what is unusual, it also has a little bit of putting up food, food preservation. And of course, it has venison jerky. Applesauce, pickled peppers, dried fruit trail mix, fruit and veggie leathers, pickled eggs, rhubarb preserves. Well, of course, one recipe I didn't mention was Carol's famous acorn cookies. I'm not showing you the page for that because I am going to try this fall to get enough acorns I gotta get them before the squirrels do, so I can make my own flour, and then I'm going to try making the cookies. I've always wanted to taste them after that episode, so I think that would be a fun video also. So let me conclude with the final words in the book. As Rick and his fellow survivors on The Walking Dead have shown us, staying alive and well-fed in a walker-infested world is not for the misinformed. It requires survival smarts, resourcefulness, and nerve to nourish your body and spirit when food and supplies are scarce. Luckily, you're now armed with this collection of tips and recipes to make post-apocalyptic life a bit easier and hopefully more delicious. Whether growing food behind safe walls hunting for it through unknown terrain, drying it in the open air, or preserving it in jars. The same principle applies. Preparedness is the key to survival. Also, no one likes to eat alone. Start preparing now by gathering your closest friends to make the tasty recipes in this book. I'll guarantee a solid team of compatriots on your side if the unimaginable ever happens. Best of luck. As always, please subscribe and share the knowledge.